Okay, welcome back. Um, last thing I want to cover before I um, hit the sack is I want to go through a problem where the period's different, where we have these extra solutions because there's something else that's happening. So um, here's the equation we're going to go through. We've got 2 cosine of 3x plus 1 equals 0. We're again on 0 to 2 pi. What we have to look at is the big difference here. So now we've got a 3x on the inside. That means that our period's changed. So if I pull in my calculator over here, I'm just going to visualize what this was. And this should mimic um, what we talked about in class this morning. Um, basically what changes is if we imagine our original cosine of x and we graph it, like there's our shape. Like it starts at the maximum, goes down, comes back up. Like it repeats one total time during 0 to 2 pi. But if we change the period to 3, ah crap, gotta go all the way down here. There we go. If we change the period to 3, um, what's going to happen is it's going to repeat more often. Like the period's shorter, meaning that it repeats in 2 pi over 3. So right there is one repetition, right there is a second, and right there is a third repetition. So now if we're solving an equation, instead of getting just two solutions, we're going to end up with three times as many solutions, because we'll get two on each period, or two on each um, single repetition of the graph. So we'd have like two there, two there, and two there. So in this case we'd end up with six solutions, or at least that's what we should expect. So we've got to be on the lookout for that, find ways to make that um, happen for us, like find ways to make it make sense. So to start off, on this problem, we can at least get into it um, by treating it like there's nothing different, like just pretending there's no problem here. We've just got 2 cosine of blah, 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 plus 1 equals 0. It's just a normal problem. So to solve that guy, we would do normal algebra. So I'd subtract 1 on both sides, make a 0, get 2 cosine of blah, 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 equals negative 1, and then divide by 2 cosine of 3x, or, or sorry, cosine of the equals negative 1 half. So, assuming we just um, we just kind of conveniently place our finger right there, um, solving the cosine of something equals negative 1 half, we can do. We can do that using the same strategies as before. So we can draw out our little coordinate plane, and we can ask ourselves, where is cosine equal to a negative number? So, ASTC. Well, cosine's positive down here, and all of them are positive here, so cosine's got to be negative over there. So I can draw up my triangles here. They're always right triangles. And now I can label it and think about what this would be. So if the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, this is going to be a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. I know it's hard to see. I can see it's not focusing right. That's not a better. Sorry. Um, <coughs> what we can do here is we can figure out what the angle is just by looking in here. Or at least we can find the reference angle first. So I'm opposite the root 3. That tells me it's 60 degrees, or pi over 3, for both of those guys. And then if it's pi over 3, we can use the same strategy as before. That's pi, so same thing as 3 pi over 3. Our angle is going to be 1 less than that, so 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is going to give us 2 pi over 3. And then going downward, um, it's going to be one more than this guy, so it's going to be 4 pi over 3. And so there are two solutions so far. Like we get that um, the angles would be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Now that's not enough, because really, that would be um, if it was cosine of x equals negative 1 half. Right now we have cosine of 3x equals those two guys. So if we want to get rid of this 3x, we've got to actually do a little bit of work we have to multiply all the stuff by one-third so that we end up with just x alone. So I'm going to do that. And when I do, obviously I get a 1 there, I'm going to get x equals um, 2 pi over 9 and 4 pi over 9 just by multiplying across. Okay, so two solutions. Yay, hooray. Unfortunately, there are more to be had because those only come from the first repetition of the cosine. That first little that first little roller coaster bit. So we've got to find the other ones. So to do that, we have to think about this period. So normally, um, the reason that the shapes repeat for all these guys, why we get that endless up and down for sine and cosine, comes from the fact that coterminal angles um, have the same sine and cosine. Um, now at the same time here, it's not really coterminal because we're not adding 2 pi, but we can think in terms of periods. One period away, we'll have the same two answers spaced out differently, or you know, we'll have answers um, at the same positioning, just um, one period away from the first ones. So what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to add the period multiple times until we get all six solutions that we need here. So first off, when I look at this equation, 
2 cosine of 3x, my period, just like we found in the last chapter in the graphing, will be 2 pi over 3. <coughs> Therefore, we can find our next two solutions by adding a period to the equation, or to our two solutions right down here, just like we would have added 2 pi to find a coterminal angle. It's very similar processes. Processes? Processes. Um, whichever. Okay, so what we do is we can think of this as our first and second solution. To find more, we have to add the period. <coughs> so 2 pi over 9 plus my period, which is 2 pi over 3, and then 4 pi over 9 plus my period also. Now, unfortunately, our period of 2 pi over 3 isn't going to be easy to add to because they have different denominators. So before I do that, I'm going to change it to um, something that can add nicely. So I'll multiply up and down by 3 just so I can get a common denominator here. And that will make this um, equal to 6 pi over 9. So we're actually going to be adding 6 pi over 9 each time because that's really our period. Okay, so we can do that. I can do that. Um, so 2 pi over 9 plus 6 pi over 9 is going to give me 8 pi over 9. So there's a second solution. And then here, 4 pi over 9 plus 6 pi over 9 is going to be 10 pi over 9. So there's our fourth solution right there. So now we have four total solutions. We still need six. The way we do that is once again, we go and we add another period. Because this thing's going to repeat three times on this interval, 0 to 2 pi, we need to account for all of it. So here we go. Plus another period. Plus another period. That's going to give me, going really fast to make sure I erase the thing, it's going to give me 14 pi over 9 and 16 pi over 9. So after all that work, I end up with six total solutions. Okay, to wrap this puppy up, um, what we got to do is we've got to write out all six of our solutions and then probably check it on the calculator just to make sure. So um, first let's write them out. And we can write them out in uh, order from least to greatest, or smallest to biggest. Um, so first, our first two solutions were 2 pi over 9 and 4 pi over 9. Then when we added in the other two periods that came from the fact that this equation repeated three times, or this shape repeated three times, um, we ended up with 8 pi over 9, 10 pi over 9, 14 pi over 9, and 42, no, I'm just kidding, 16 pi over 9. So we ended up with those six solutions. So there we go. It looks like there are six solutions. All we've got to do is just make sure we did this right, everything makes sense. Let's make sure there are six solutions on the calculator. So let me find my calculator. Aquí está. Um, ahora vamos a grafar. No, I don't know how to say graph in Spanish. I should ask somebody. So we're going to graph this equation and see if it works. Or sorry, that equation. You still can't see my finger. We're going to graph that equation and see if it works out. So here we go. Let's get ready. 2 cosine 3x plus 1, and then we're going to set it equal to 0. So we want to see if this is true. Our window goes from 0 to 2 pi, and let's find out. So we want to see it cross, um, since we've got this equal to 0, we want to see it cross the x-axis 6 times. 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, yeah! Oh, you couldn't see my fist. I was pumping my fist. I was so excited. Yeah! Yeah, baby, yeah! Six solutions, and I bet they're the exact six that we found down here. And so there we go. In fact, you know what? Since I'm sitting here and I've got a few seconds, I can actually show you how you could check to make sure that at least one of our solutions works. We can go to trace, and we can just see if we plug in one of these solutions, will it be equal to zero? So let's try it. So let me zoom it up here. So if I type in 2 pi divided by 9, please be 0. Oh, yeah. It's equal to 0. That one worked. I can do the same thing with 4 pi over 9. And I'm going to stop there afterwards if it works. Yes. Yeah. It works. So, in fact, we have solved this correctly because it works. So um, just to kind of reiterate what we did in this problem, as though I'd kind of asked it as a tutorial question. Let me kind of talk through it. Um, what we started with is a trig equation. So first we solved it 
in quotes, just like we normally would in any sort of situation, pretending there wasn't a period shift. We found our answers. Then, of course, since we were trying to solve for x, we had to um, multiply by one third to get rid of that three, which gave us these two um, answers. From there, because we knew that the period repeats more often, since you can kind of see that in our picture here, it goes up and down that full repetition three times over this um, graph, over 0 to 2 pi. Um, because we knew that, we had to account for those extra solutions. So we found them by adding the period of 2 pi over 3, or um, rewritten with a common denominator 6 pi over 9, um, to the original two solutions twice. Once for the second repetition, and once more for the third repetition. That gave us six total answers, which our graph verifies worked. So there we go. Very difficult problem, very challenging, but very doable if you understand how um, period influences the shape of the graph and how to um, use that information to find extra solutions. So as always, hopefully this video has been useful. Hopefully this um, gave you a chance to catch up a little bit if you were a little confused. And otherwise, <coughs> enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye.